Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, hello, and Ramadan Mubarak. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, for Let the Quran Speak. So let's uh, think about our book for today. It's uh, called The Meaning of the Quran. It's uh, by Saida Bulala Maududi. I'm holding the first of uh, six volumes, it's, so it's a massive collection. And uh, in the, the previous uh, review, I talked about uh, a, a book that uh, gives us the detailed grammatical information about each uh, verse, uh, each word <laughs> where, where necessary of the Quran. And uh, in this case now, we're dealing with a detailed commentary that doesn't go necessarily word by word, uh, but, but gives us idea by idea. And what I find very unique about this commentary is that it, uh, it gives us important links uh, to the Bible and explains uh, things in terms of the, of, the, of the Bible. So we'll get to that in some more detail. Uh, so it's uh, Sayyid Abul Allah Maududi, uh, Rahimullah, may God have mercy on him, was a Pakistani scholar uh, who uh, passed away uh, recently. And uh, he, his uh, uh, works and, and teachings have had a tremendous impact uh, on Muslims uh, in the subcontinent and uh, wherever Muslims from the subcontinent have uh, spread out into the world, such as in the United States and in, in Canada. Uh, so movements have been um, developed uh, uh, based on uh, some of his uh, teachings. So th these teachings are very much alive today, and this book is uh, much celebrated as well. So I said that, uh, that this book links a lot with the, with the Bible, and uh, let's look at how it uh, does that. So, if we go to Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, that is the second chapter of the Quran, uh, then we will see, for example, that it's talking about Israelite history. So, for example, Surah, 60, uh, Surah 2, this is, uh, verses 63 and 64, Call to mind the time when we raised above you the tour and uh, made a covenant with you, saying, Hold fast to the book which we are giving you, and bear in mind the commands and precepts contained therein. It is expected that this will lead you on to the paths of virtue and piety. But even after that, you forsook the covenant. And nevertheless, Allah did not withhold his grace and mercy from you. Otherwise, you would have been utterly ruined long before this. So that's his translation uh, of the Arabic text. So we have uh, basically the Arabic text. Then we have his translation, uh, which in this case spills over into the following page. And then, Below the trans, so this is the translation, and then below the translation, we have his notes and uh, commentary explaining further why he translates some things that so in a certain way, or more generally, what the the verse uh, means. So we want to know what is this uh, about the the tour uh, being raised above the people. So now we look at his footnote uh, eighty one, and we can see that uh, he gives us information about that. So what does he say? This incident has been described in the Talmud. So, you know, he's referring us to the Talmud. And this is something that a Muslim would, would never have checked on, on his or her own. I'm as, as speaking about average Muslim readers. And of course, even my, I, I myself, I have not consulted the Talmud directly. Uh, but I'm getting this information about what is there in the Talmud. Uh, so uh, this incident has been described in the Talmud, the, in these words. The Holy One, Blessed be he inverted Mount Sinai over them like a huge vessel and declared, if you accept the Torah, well and good. If not, here shall be your sepulcher. And then he gives us the reference from the Talmud, Shab 88a. So, so, so we can see then that by reading this book, we are getting insights not only into the Bible, which he quotes often, uh, but we are also getting information from uh, books that we might not, not have consulted uh, from, uh, Jew from among the Jewish uh, scriptures, uh, in this case, the, the Talmud. And then he goes on to uh, say, although its description in the Bible is a little different from that of the Talmud, it depicts the scene very vividly. Uh, it, uh, and then he quotes, And Mount Sinai was altogether uh, on a smoke beca because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended uh, as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And now he's quoting Exodus chapter 19, verse number 18. Uh, and, all, and all of the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings 
and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed uh, and uh, stood far, afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, and let not God speak with us, lest we die. Here he quotes Exodus chapter 20, verses number 18 to 19. So you see how he has weaved together information from the Talmud, and from the Bible itself, he has compared the information that is there in the Talmud with what is there in the Bible. And then he's giving all of this as commentary and further information and background to the Quranic text. And so if we did not have that information, it would be a puzzle for us. Like, why, why does it say that God raised the, the, the tour over them? What is the tour? And, uh, and, and how does it mean that God raised it uh, over them? Uh, so... In this case, uh, we get a more rounded information, uh, a more rounded view of what the Quran means, uh, because we can see it's uh, the way in which it ties in with the Bible and with the previous scriptures. Now, classical commentators on, on the Quran, um, mostly uh, writing in Arabic, uh, did not have such uh, uh, an access to the Bible. Uh, there was a scholar in the Middle Ages, al Biqai, uh, who uh, was very much steeped into the Bible. He would quote whole sections of the Bible as commentary on, on the Quran. Uh, but he did not give the kind of analysis which is here. What we see Sayyid Abul Ala Maududi, uh, rahimahullah, doing here is quite unique, like in the history of uh, uh, Quranic commentary, at least uh, that I have come across in both uh, Arabic and uh, in English. And so I uh, re highly recommend this book for any uh, Muslim uh, because we, we all need to have this kind of comparative uh, religion knowledge. Uh, but uh, it will be especially recommended for students of comparative religion like myself. It becomes an indispensable work to see this kind of connection between the Quran and the previous uh, scriptures. Is there anything that I don't like about the book? Well. Uh, Sayyid Abul Al Maududi Rahimullah is known for his political interpretation of Islam, and naturally that uh, political interpretation uh, colors his uh, translation and commentary as well. So one has to be aware of that. Uh, no book is perfect except the Book of God itself, and any translation and commentary is going to be done by a human being, and it's going to have human flaws, and people see things differently. He emphasized one thing, that political interpretation. Somebody else may find that to be too much of an emphasis, as I do, uh, especially in the light of recent uh, events. But nonetheless, this re remains a very important book. This book has actually changed my life. I've been reading this book since uh, before it was published in this handsome volume. It was published piecemeal, one little volume at a time, uh, smaller volumes. And I've been reading that uh, you know, for, for decades now. Um, and uh, I hope that it will have an impact on your life as well. Perhaps it will even change your life. In my next review, I will go uh, to another sort of commentary on the Quran that is briefer, but uh, it takes a more uh, rational approach to Quranic commentary. So join me for that as well. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Ramadan Mubarak. You can change someone's life this Ramadan. Donate as much or as little as you can and be part of our project to share the message of Islam to people across the globe. Visit QuranSpeaks.com and donate. Your contribution is zakat eligible and tax deductible. May God keep you safe and healthy. May God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always.